Hey guys, VFX Bro here. Very exciting overview and tutorial we're going to be going through here today. We are going to be taking 3D motion tracking and mixing it with real live footage to kind of generate this holographic effect that um, we have seen in this new iPad video. 3D motion tracking is done in all kinds of big Hollywood movies. If you've seen Transformers, Lord of the Rings, um, and pretty much any movie that uses CGI, um, uses 3D motion tracking. The specific example that we're going to be using is taken from Iron Man 2, so let's go ahead and take a look at the shot. Oh, don't mind that. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this shot right here. And you can see that the camera is moving, yeah, but the objects that have been added in appear as though they are actually in the scene. And this is achieved through 3D motion tracking. So we're going to start off our 3D motion tracking with a program called PF Track. And I'm going to, most of you probably don't have this program, but for those of you that do, I'm going to quickly show how to do a basic track that worked pretty well for the purposes of our video. So we're going to start out by clicking on a new shot here, and then we're going to go import footage. We're going to find our footage here. And then once you find the footage, hit load. It's going to bring in our clip here, and this is the whole entire take of the entire video, but we're just going to go ahead and motion track a certain portion of the video. So our first moving shot starts right about here. So what we're going to do is click on the first frame and hit this button right here. That will set the endpoint for that shot. And then we're going to go to our last frame, which is right here. Oh, there we go, and then set the set out point. So now we have this area here selected. In order to track that, we're going to do first is apply a mask to Zach because he is moving, so tracking his points won't really allow for a good track. So what we're going to do is set a mask here. So click on your mask tool and go ahead and draw a nice mask around most of him here. And then after it's draw, go ahead and hold the D button and click. So we have our pretty solid mask there. And now what we're going to do is track him so that the mask will stick with him. So we're going to click on our user feature up here. And we're going to select his eyebrow right about here. Pretty easy area to track. You're going to want to track an area with a lot of contrast. And then we're going to go ahead and analyze track user feature backwards from this point right here. So now it is tracking his eyebrow and moving backwards. There we go, very nice. So that point has been tracked. Now what we can do is right click on our mask here, hit D and then attach to feature one. So now our mask will actually stick with him. Now we can alter a few points here because we can see that the mask is a little bit thick there. Um, we don't have to worry about his hands too much because they're moving so much in and out of the frame that our trackers probably won't hold to him, but if they do we can fix that later on. And um, that sticks to him pretty well there. We can kind of close this in on him a little bit more. That's pretty good. We're going to go over our, now to our tracking parameters and we are going to bring up the window height to about 40 and the window width up to about 40 as well. We're going to keep our number of features at the same. We're going to turn off back tracking because we do have motion blur in this shot. And let's go ahead and preview that to make sure that our points look good. Those points look pretty solid. So let's close that out and let's go ahead and auto track this. Okay, so we went ahead and skipped through the tracking process. We can see that we have all of these features tracked into our moving shot. And um, what we're going to do now is go through and delete any points that we feel are not helpful to our track. So if we can see here, this piece right here is kind of tracking to his arm, which is moving. So we don't want that point. We're going to click off of our masks here, click on our auto features, and then we're going to go to our selection tool here and then click on this point and then go edit delete. So we have deleted that auto feature track. Let's move forward a little bit here. Um, 
let's see if we have any other bad tracking points. We can see this shot right here is moving um, because of the point of intersection of this back tile here in the chair, making it not a helpful tracker as well because it's not an actual point in space that it's moving along to. So we're going to also delete that one. And um, another helpful tool for deleting trackings that aren't that good, like these ones right here, is you click on the track air grid right here. And what this is going to do is delete all of the trackers that turn red, which basically means that they're not that certain. So we went ahead and deleted all of those very easily by just moving our threshold bar down. Okay, so let's keep on scrolling through here, see if we have any other bad features. Most of them look pretty good here. Oh, we've got a few more in this area right here that again are having the same problem of tracking to a point of contrast that is not an actual access still point in time. Um, let's keep on scrolling through here. Don't seem to see too many other bad features. Oh, we can see one next to his hand here that uh, if you scroll back and forth, you can see that it's moving up and down with his hand. So we want, don't want that point either. PF Track is a program that allows you to track in 3D space. So if you've seen movies like Transformers, Lord of the Rings, all heavy um, CGI movies pretty much use 3D tracking in order to add in fake 3D objects into real live footage. All right, so that looks pretty good for now. If there's any other problems down the road, we can kind of fix those um, in a different way. So we're going to go ahead and go to our solve camera, include user features, do not include auto features because that will include the one we added in here, and we're going to go to single frame. Okay, so after our camera has been solved, we can take a look here at our points, most of which are pretty good. Um, what we're going to do is we can see that our ground plane here isn't really set to what our actual world looks like. So what we can do to fix that is add in our scene orientation. So what we're going to do is close this right here and go to scene orientation, clicking on the scene orientation and then going to our rotate tool and just kind of lining it up. Sometimes um, when, we, when you don't have that many um, objects that are in um, correct alignment like we can see that this table was a little bit off from the couch we just kind of have to eye it ourselves it's not too big of an issue um, in this case because we've only got one object that we're dealing with um, what we're going to do now is select this point right here or sorry, we're going to click on groups and we're going to click on auto features again and then we're going to select this point right here when we click on the selection tool we're going to click set as origin so that's going to set the bottom of our ground plane which is great because that's the point of reference with which we're going to be putting our um, our hologram effect into so now that we have that selected let's click on it again and we're going to right click on it by hitting D and um, we're going to click tag for export so it's going to export that that uh, point right there then we can also export these so just we can so that we can kind of get a reference for the relative size of our scene so let's go ahead and tag that for export and tag this for export as well just because they're points in space that are kind of far apart so that looks pretty good there and um, now what we're going to do is go ahead and send this over to after effects to add in our hologram effects so we're going to hit d and then click camera export new you can see here we can actually export it directly into After Effects and then we're going to only s export our tagged features. We're going to bring the scale up to about 500 and um, pick a great place to export this and then hit OK. And now we have successfully exported this scene and are ready to bring it into After Effects.